Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve. In the last episode, we had some, yeah, very scary dialogue, I dare to say. It was really scary. I was horrified a bit, so I took a break. But now we're back here at Madame Tussbelt. And it's the 23rd October at uh, her Museum of Waxworks. And we are supposed to meet Mr. Sholmes here. So let's just get going. Here we are again, at the House of Horrors. I'm afraid I haven't got used to the place yet. I'd still like to turn on my heels and go straight home. Why, the confectionery, of course. Susasto Sun really is after something sweet today, isn't she? Eek! What's the matter? Look, Mr. Nadorodo, look at that waxwork! I'm quite sure it wasn't it was it wasn't there before. Yeah, there he is. It looks exactly like Mr. Sean's down to the very last detail. Aha. Uh -huh. What is it? Oh, sorry, I think you'll find that's the temporary waxwork himself. Oh, the friend of my dedicated employee. Oh yes, uh, hello again, it's Vinoske, Vinoske Naruhodo. I must say, I'm quite spellbound by the great detective. He is a marvel. My precious waxwork is already back where it belongs. You, you don't mean... But yes, the mystery is solved already. Wow, Mr. Sholmes can really engage his brain when he is hungry enough. So as you can see, he has returned to his... Habitual duties. Yes. His his habitual duties. Allah, do not disturb. Uh. Poor Sasato-san. She looks very perplexed. Well, we have to examine, of course, and we already checked this in the last, no, no, in the second to last, I think, episode it was. So we checked everything out, but it's time to talk to Mr. Sholmes then. We really do need to speak with Mr. Sholmes, and I am longing to say hello again. But where is he? I think you might find that he's quite nearby, actually. Ah. Uh -huh. What, what do you... Indeed, my dear fellows, it is I. The world-famous great detective and waxwork, Herlock Sholmes. Susato-san, Susato-san! My most humble apologies. I thought I'd died and gone to eternal paradise for a moment while London. My dear madam, allow me to make my amends by offering you a tasty free deduction at some point. As long as it's not of questionable street food quality. I don't understand. Why are you working as a waxwork here, Mr. Sholmes? Merely a secret identity, you understand? Though the case is largely solved now. Largely solved? We're, we're talking about the waxwork abduction, I presume? Indeed we are, my good fellow. As I predicted, it was a very... Uh, it was as easy as proverbial pie. Though I confess, I'm yet to partake of a pie, proverbial or otherwise. Or any food so far today, for that matter. That stomach rumble echoed around the whole museum. So how did you manage to solve it so quickly? Ah, well, do you remember I said it was largely solved? Anyway, I simply negotiated with the culprit. Are you familiar with his so-called telephone? Oh yes, it's the most modern invention allowing you to hold a conversation with people far away. In Japan, only the Imperial capital and a handful of other cities are connected as yet. 
This morning, a telephone call was received here from the perpetrator of the abduction. As such, I was able to negotiate terms, and in the end, the wax book was returned. That's amazing! Just between you and I... It would appear the culprit had always intended to return the stolen wax work in any event. Oh, but I thought whoever was responsible had demanded a ransom, no? Yes, I think perhaps. The ransom demand was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive. But does that not mean... your negotiating was entirely unnecessary? that I must ask you to keep from Madame Tuspels at all costs. A hungry young Iris awaits my return to Baker Street after all. Poor Iris. Now then, do I sense that you have some business with this great waxwork? We indeed do, but you know me guys, we're gonna present stuff first. Mr. Shorms, about this. Nah, okay, so he doesn't have anything to say about that. Okay, that's okay then. What about the newspaper? We already had a talk about that too. Yeah, okay, so that's not going to trigger anything new. So, therefore, what about the crossbow, Mr. Shorts? Nothing about the crossbow. What about the cloth? Nothing about the cloth either. That was actually to be expected. But that's okay. What about the sketch? Do you have anything to say about... No, you don't have anything about the sketch to say. Okay, what about the photograph of the victim? Yeah, there we go. Odi... Odious man. He has a fearsome adversary. What? You, you, you mean you fought him? I once infiltrated his criminal organization in order to investigate the man and his activities. But he saw through my disguise instantly. I still remember what the man said to me now. What was it? Whoever saw such a tall old lady? Old lady? Indeed, but my special disguise hasn't seen the light of day again since that humiliation. Mrs. Minicle is retired. Mrs. Minicle? I would give my right arm to see that. Aha, uh -huh, okay, so we got something out of that. Nothing about the autopsy report, I think. Nope. Nothing about that. What about Arthur? Nothing about Arthur, right? Although you're an inventor yourself. That's a little unfortunate because Arthur should be of interest to Mr. Shorns. Nothing about that photograph either. And the wooden birdcage, maybe? Oh, no, he... It's just the same dialogue as with the photograph. Okay, and the last one? About Mr. Drabber, you sure have something to say about this. No, you don't! Okay. Okay, unfortunate. So let's converse. Let's, call, uh, let's converse about Enoch Drabber himself. We're in the process of trying to track somebody down. Oh. Yes, a man by the name of Enoch Drebber. He's the swindler who duped Professor Hairbrain and the engineer who built the Kinesis machine. A swindler and an engineer. Quite the modern man. He also seems to be a conjurer of sorts too, with considerable knowledge of stage magic. We really need to locate him before the trial resumes tomorrow morning. But we have so few clues to go on, that's the trouble. Do you have any good ideas? I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to have good ideas before one has data. If I knew something of the man's appearance, at least, I may be in a better position to help. Yes, Trevor's appearance. Fortunately for you, however, presently I have little to occupy myself and little to fill my stomach. As soon as you find any clue, no matter how small, I shall, I should gladly give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so we are supposed to do this and then show the photograph? Okay, I'm just gonna present the photograph then. Here you go, Mr. Shorms. Mr. Shorms, would you cast your eyes over this photographic print? It's of Mr. Enoch Drabber. The face of the engineer we seek. 
Well, all Englishmen look broadly the same, of course. So looking at the photograph won't be particularly instructive. Are you alright, Mr. Shorts? Ah, oh, yes, forgive me. Very interesting, this. Very interesting indeed. What's wrong, Mr. Shorts? You've turned quite pale all of a sudden. Aha. Uh -huh. So, if we converse, do we have anything? Okay, we have to talk about Kazuma's death first, apparently. Mr. Shorts, did you lie to us? My dear Mr. Naruhodo, stay that piercing stare. What is this about? Last winter, when we were first on our way to Britain aboard the steamship. The words were very clear. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events led to this curious murder. You told us that it was murder and you examined Kazuma-sama's body. Indeed, and wherein lies the problem? We met him earlier today, the victim, Kazuma Asugi. You're quite sure? He was wearing some sort of mask and was apparently suffering from amnesia. But yes, I'm quite sure it was Kazuma-sama. You must have known at the time, Mr. Shorns, that he wasn't actually dead. Well, I can only assume I was swept up in the murderous atmosphere of the moment. But the fellow wasn't dead at all. <laughs> Priceless. I don't suppose that performance would pass muster, would it, Mr. Naruto? I could believe that the crewman present at the time made a mistake. But not you, Mr. Shorns. I will now tell you something of the first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are wont to lie. I, it will serve you well to remember that. Please, Mr. Shorns. Tomorrow in court, you will find yourself on the th threshold of a very great mystery. For now, I'm afraid that is all I can say. I have a suggestion, Mr. Naruto. Will you indulge me? Oh, well, what is it? As I explained to you when you arrived, the missing waxwork has been returned. And I personally reinstalled it in the exhibit from which it was taken, behind those thick curtains. Oh yes, the professor exhibit, isn't it? Would you like to see it for a mere five shillings? That's a special one-time only price, you understand? What? The opportunity will come again, I might add. Wouldn't you like to see the fruits of my labor? Oh, well, we do have a rather pressing investigation to carry out. Perhaps we could postpone? The price is a very reasonable five shillings. I think you'll find it's well worth it. Are you... are you being quite serious, Mr. Shorts? Surely you need only look at my expression to ascertain if this is a seriousness or silliness. I can never tell with you, that's the point. Very well, it couldn't hurt. Here's your five shillings. Gratefully received. So, the special exhibit awaits behind the curtain. I'm waiting to pursue, peruse it at your leisure. Well, the money's been spent, so let's go and see the special exhibit. Okay, let's do this. Hmm, through those heavy curtains at last. Okay. Five shillings we've had to pay. It doesn't seem right somehow that Mr. Sean slipped the money into his own pocket, does it? No. Ah, we could ask Gina to retrieve it for us, using her special skills. Pickpocketing police officers and diddling detectives. Is this what makes Britain great? 
Not to mention demigod prosecutors taking the law into their own hands or chip-loving inspectors. Inspector Gregson comes off rather well in that list, I think. Alright, so let's have a look behind the curtain. 23rd October, Madame Tospel's special exhibit. Wow. Ooh! <laughs> Oh dear, I, I felt a shiver run down my spine as soon as we walked in here. Mr. Sato, I say we turn our, on our heels and go straight home. Why, a really big confectionery. We, we certainly can't do that. We've paid five shillings already. True. Actually, now I'm looking a little more closely. We've paid good money to see an exhibit that's clearly incomplete. The nerve of the great deadening detective is far more terrifying than anything else in this place. This must be what Mr. Shaw's meant when he said the case was largely solved. Be that as it may, Mr. Shaw's heavily implied there'd be a clue about the engineer in here, didn't he? But where? Since we've paid five shillings, let's do five shillings worth of investigation, shall we? Yes, we, we will get what we paid for. Is that fear of frustration that's making Susato-san's voice tremble? Well, of course we are going to examine, but guys, I do have a heavy suspicion that this person is actually Mr. Enoch Drebber. We're gonna have a look at that in a moment. Let's see what else is there that we can check out. So this grave for sure. Let's have a look at the grave. It doesn't matter if they are here in Britain or in Japan. Grave vaults are scary. Now I come to think of it, this is the first time I've seen a British grave. According to what I've read, the custom in Britain is to bury the dead as they are, without cremation. What? But, but if you do that, you might accidentally bury people while they're still alive. I'm not sure that would be worse than accidentally incinerating people while they're still alive. I think we can both agree that it's best not to be still alive when our time comes then. And what am I to say to that? Uh, I actually read about being, uh, people being buried and uh, while they're still alive. And that was actually a huge problem in the 19th century, but guys. Just as a side note, not because I'm scared of the scenery. It's just because I wanted to let you know. Okay, let's have a look at the person here. Or the figurine. This must be the killer, the feet known as the professor. Yes, I think so, according to what Madame Tuspel said. He killed five victims, all of noble or royal blood. The wax book is so lifelike, isn't it? Like all the models in this place. I know, it looks like it could start moving at any moment, doesn't it? If only it had a head, that is. Perhaps we should exa examine it in a little more detail. Alright, a little more detail, so we can only, the collar, okay. So this is the condemned man. Yes, the so-called professor. Then, then perhaps his head was ch ch chopped off by a guillotine, but unable to find peace he, he emerged from his grave as a headless g g ghost. Do, do we have to entertain such terrifying ideas, Mr. Sato? Anyway, I'm sure the model had a head once. There's a map of fitting for it, see? Then, perhaps Mr. Shorms absent-mindedly forgot to reattach it? That's an extremely absent-minded detective you're describing, isn't it? Or perhaps the thief absent-mindedly forgot to include the head when he or she returned it to the museum. And that would be an extremely absent-minded thief. Could there have been some reason why only the head wasn't returned? Well, whatever the reason, it means we don't know what the face of the infamous, pro infamous professor looked like, do we? Oh. There's something caught just inside the convict's jacket here. It, it looks like a piece of broken glass and quite a big piece too. It's very thick, isn't it? About five times thicker than normal window, gla window glazing, I'd say. 
Where could such a thick piece of glass have come from, I wonder? I suppose it must have been made thick to increase its strength. But why? Well, perhaps because of because the glass had to span a particularly wide area, such as in a big building, for example. Ah, well, we've seen a large glass building recently, haven't we? And some of the glass was broken too. You don't mean... Exactly. The Crystal Tower at the Great Exhibition. But why would glass from the Crystal Tower be lodged inside the waxmith's jacket? It makes you think, doesn't it? The piece of broken glass has been entered into the court record. Early in court we established that the Kinesis experiment was a trick. And now we discovered this fragment of glass here in this wax booth. Is it just a coincidence? Ah, oh, okay. So that's pretty much everything. I'll have a look at the court record. Uh, uh, I also forgot to read the small part here. Small fragment of very unusual and thick glass that was found in the folds of the clothing of, uh, of the Professor Waxwood. It would appear to be from the uh, Great Crystal Tower. Hmm. This piece of glass is almost as thick as it is wide. Yes, I've never seen anything like it. If you were to compare it to a human, only Mr. Sholmes has such thick skin. There's really no need for such comparison, Mr. Naruto, as you well know. Anyway, it can only be from the Crystal Tower, surely? Yes, I think so too. It was probably made specially to meet the demands of that great structure. Aha, interesting. Hmm, nothing else of interest though, right? No, it doesn't seem that way, okay. Interesting. Nothing else of interest here, right? Nope. Nothing else of interest, so let's head back. And now it's time to have a look at this figurine. But first the spade. This part of the exhibit is just as disturbing as the rest. It looks surreal. It seems to be a young man in a white overcoat. And he has a large shovel in his hand too. Look! Perhaps we should investigate in a little more detail. We, we can. Okay, so there's a camera. I want to check out the shovel for sure. What a large shovel. He's holding it rather ominously, isn't he? What on earth, what on earth was the man doing with a shovel in a graveyard in the middle of the night? Um, Mr. Sato? Yes? That's a spade, isn't it? No, it's a shovel. No, no, shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. We've been through this, Mr. Nadorno. It's a shovel. No, 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 no. Although, we haven't considered shovels. We've allowed ourselves to be distracted, I feel. Perhaps we should concentrate on what the man was doing with the implement. So we're going to bury the hatchet? You're right, though. What was the man doing in the graveyard in the first place? That's the real question. Uh, just a second, so can head back? Okay, we can head back, we can go. I just want to check out if we can... This must be the killer. Yeah, yeah, we had that already, because I want to check out if we can also, if we come closer here. No, we can't. Okay, I thought maybe we can move around here too, but we can't. So, let's get back to this figurine here. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, we had that, Susato-san. Although, I love you, uh, your tone and voice and everything. Hmm, alright, so, oops. Oh, ah, oh, I misclicked. I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. So... Oh, I misclicked again! I'm sorry. I will uh, pull the... pull my keyboard a little closer. So I don't have this blunder again. I'm sorry, guys. Really, really sorry. Believe me, I do want to check out everything as you love to do would love to do as well ah what is this okay that doesn't seem to be of interest want to check out the lamp first though that's quite a large lamp the man's carrying or is it a lantern it's not unlike a japanese cochin paper lantern actually is it lamp lantern cochin i don't know that word by the way i'm sorry the point is it it, it costs very little light to be walking alone in a graveyard at night with only this. Well, I certainly couldn't do it. 
I'm not sure I could visit a graveyard at all, even in broad daylight, to be honest. Okay. So nothing about that. What about... Maybe something about this hairdo? No, nothing about his hairdo. What about this photograph, uh, photograph machine? What's this here? Well, this would appear to be a lens in the middle, so I believe it's probably a camera. A, a camera? But it's so small. British technology is incredible, isn't it? I mean, what about Mr. Sholmes's skin prints? I think perhaps you should treat Mr. Sholmes's invention as an exception to the rule. But anyway, why would the man be in a graveyard at a night with a camera? I... I wonder... Perhaps he was trying to capture the moment a dead body came back as ghost of film. We'll just borrow this for a little while, I think. The camera has been entered into the court record. Camera, the camera from around the neck of waxwork in the, in the Madame Taspel special exhibit. By looking at the photographic plate inside the camera, we can see what picture was taken. What's a photographic plate? It's a piece of glass coated in a special emulsion that reacts to the light coming in through the lens. If we open the cover at the back of the camera, we should find it. Let's have a look. You should see yourself, Sasato-san. Your eyes are shining. You really do like machinery, don't you? Okay, but before we can do that, we'll have to check out the truth, which is... This person's monocle. Let's have a look at his face. I can't see his face very well, can you? Perhaps if, perhaps if I just... Oh, do, do you think you should be man... Well, do, do you think you should be manhandling the exhibits, Mr. Nagarudo? I put it back exactly as it was, don't worry. Oh! What, what on earth? How can... I... I don't believe it! A black monocle! Mr. Naruto, is is it possible that this man is? Yes. It's Enoch Drabber. The color of his hair is different, but it's unmistakable. It's unmistakably him. Indeed, it is. Mr. Shones. This man is the subject of of your present hunt, I believe. Yes, that's... that's right. Just who is this man? Why is he here in this exhibit? And why does the convict behind him have no head? The head was missing when the model was returned by the thief who stole it. What... what a surprise. So then the case isn't yet solved, is it? Did I not say to myself, largely solved were my words, I believe? But I must locate the missing head, shoot the sweet, as madame would say, or I'll be in grave trouble. A very hungry iris still awaits my return to Baker Street, preferably with rations. Ah! Do you know, though, something about this room is strange. Strange? What do you mean? Well, the displays in the House of Horrors are supposed to depict real events, are they not? Indeed they are, Mr. Sato. Do go on. And, as terrifying as they are, the scenes in the other exhibits are believable. But this one... This surely couldn't ever really have happened, could it? I think it's time I educated you a little. About the nature of the incidents involving the professor ten years ago. Well, we are about to converse, guys, but since we are hitting the half-hour mark, I just want to check out the camera as last thing to do in this, uh, in this episode. What a wonderful, ma wonderful machine! You really love contraptions like this, don't you? Oh yes, anything mechanical I find absolutely irresistible. Almost, uh, almost irresistible, surely? Well, whenever I see a pocket watch, for example, I can't help myself. I simply have to take it apart. That's worrying. Yes, father tells the time by the rumblings of his stomach now. He's given up on... Uh, he's, he's given up having a watch. 
poor Professor Mikotoba. Alright, so let's check this out. Look, Mr. Nadu. Look, Mr. Nadu. What is it? On the bellows just here, there seems to be some very dark red stains. Yes, you're right. It looks like blood, actually. Oh, oh my. I'm, I'm sure it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> the details of the camera have been updated. The camera from around the neck of the waxwork of Mr. Drabin's special exhibit. When the lens is extended, dark staining is visible on the bellows. Okay, that's not worrying at all, is it? Okay, so the lens here, we check that out. And we are supposed to open this up too, right? Just a second, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So let's check out the back. Oh look, oh look the cover came, out, uh, came open. Yes, now there should be a glass plate inside. You have to change the plate with each new photograph you want to take, you see. Is something wrong? There is no plate. It's been removed. Oh, what a pity. But I suppose you could think about it. This wouldn't be the actual camera that was used at the time, just like the waxwork isn't the actual person. So we'd never have found a photographic print of the executed comic coming back to life anyway. Oh, yes, you're quite right, of course. Poor Sasatushan. She looks devastated. Alright, so we check that out too. I'm going to present this to Mr. Sholmes as a last thing to do in this episode. Mr. Sholmes, about this, okay. He doesn't care. So that's it then. Alright, but... In the next episode, we are going to talk to Mr. Sholmes about what happened at this exhibit and what is what this is all about. So if you want to know how things are going to unfold, you'll have to tune in next time for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. See you then.